was able to listen to her son's heart beating six months after that accident had taken their son. He was in a coma. Um, I'm medically induced for five days. But then on Wednesday, his doctor, when we came in, gave us the choice. He said, you can either pull the plug or I'll do a brain scan and we'll declare it brain dead. And that's when we explained to him that he was an organ donor. I didn't personally want him to die in vain, especially because, you know, I pushed him to get his driver's license and he didn't want to. It. I know what his wishes were and that we were going to follow through with them regardless how hard it was. After three days of testing, I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. A very dear friend of mine walks in and he sits down on the edge of my bed and he goes, Gene, I got bad news. I've got to put a defibrillator pacemaker in your chest and I got to get you on a heart transplant list, my friend. Life changed after that. I died three separate times along my journey and was resuscitated each one of those three times. And I had two artificial hearts that were implanted along the way. I suffered three separate strokes. Each one of those strokes took a little bit more and a little bit more of my vision. I'm legally blind here in the United States, so I knew what the outcome was. I knew that it was a death sentence, that it's very, very unlikely that I would get a heart. It was very, very unlikely that I would survive beyond the five years from that point. Twelve years I waited on that transplant list. My wife handed me the phone. She said, you're going to want to take this phone call. And on the other end was the woman who told me, Gene, we think we finally found you a heart. And I was a little excited about that, but I knew that there was someone that was suffering a tragedy. They did the surgery over the next 14 hours. And when I awakened from that, the first thing I remember is that the nurses were asking me, Gene, is it possible that you could write an anonymous donor letter. I'm 100% sure this is the guy that got Cody's heart. We were just sitting there and this was the night before Thanksgiving. So I called the TV station. The day before I was to do my first 5K, my donor family happened to see that interview and put two and two together. Thanksgiving Eve night, we decided as a family we were not going to have Thanksgiving. They were driving across the state to be able to meet a guy they had never met before. I hugged him and he told me thank you and I said no thank you. It was the most genuine hug I think I have ever received. I had a stethoscope in my pocket and I put my hand on her hand and I put it up to my chest. You know, that's Cody in somebody else's body. You know, that's Cody's heart. You know, that beat that was beating in his heart. It was an overwhelming feeling, but I was glad that we got to experience it. He was such a wonderful young man. At 20 years old, he had left the planet early and uh, shared with me a gift that I'll never be able to repay. It's really helped us. He's not completely gone. There's pieces of him still here. He's helped so many other families not go through the pain that we went through of losing a loved one. It makes me super proud. Cody is a hero. All donors are heroes. Right.